Hello everybody, my name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Westfall College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. Now today I would like to make a little review on a product that was released not that long ago. Uh, it is a uh, new panning plugin, actually that uh, to some extent an entire new panning paradigm. And that is a space controller by sound particles. Now what really caught my attention is the idea that, uh, that you can use a phone as a panning device. So instead of kind of using your knobs, what you would do is you would use your phone and you would point your phone in directions where you want your sound to be. And then you can pan that way. And what I'd like to do today is I would like to have a brief look at it. And uh, I'm going to use the project that we did last week, uh, where we looked into Ambihead HD from Noisemakers uh, as, a, um, as a way to integrate a essentially a do-it-yourself head tracking device. So what we're going to do today is in Nuendo, I'm going to have head tracking as, as well as uh, interactive uh, panning simultaneously going on. So let's have a look at that. So the project that I'm using is the project that we did last week, uh, and I'm going to uh, continue exactly where we left off last week. Um, so uh, just to have a recap, uh, I have a little uh, track here in Nuendo uh, with three audio tracks, a drum track, a synth track, and a bass track. Um, the drum track is right in front of me. The uh, synth track is to the is panned to the left. The, uh, the bass track is panned to the right. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking these three stereo tracks, I'm routing them into, I'm actually turning them into mono, and then routing them into an ambisonics bus. And on the ambisonics bus, I have the uh, Ambihead HD um, plugin uh, that essentially takes the um, the, the ambisonic signal and decodes that into a binaural signal. Now the Ambihead HD is connected to uh, a head tracking device on my headphones. And uh, this head tracking device is the, um, the um, uh, RG Labs head tracker that we discussed last week. Uh, and uh, just, just to have a brief recap on how that sounds, let me just kind of play that. So, so once again, I have the... Uh, the drums in front of me and what I probably need to do is I, I probably need to uh, reset the, the position because it drifted a little after I, I moved the head phone to the side. So I have the drums in front of me, I have the synth uh, on the right, uh, slightly behind me on the left, I have the, the bass slightly behind me on the right. And uh, and that essentially was as far as we, as we went last week. So what I would like to do now is let me just stop, stop that here. Um, what I would like to do now is I would like to change the, the panners to the um, sound particles space panner and uh, see how their approach to panning actually works in practice. Now, uh, changing the panner is fairly straightforward. All you really need to do is you need to right click on the panning window here and that will open up the options that you have. In my particular case, I have quite a few. Um, but uh, the one that we are interested in here is the space controller. Now, as soon as I do that, the space controller opens up. And the space controller is, um, um, you know, kind of like any other panning device. The, the, the one thing that threw me off a little is essentially that this panning device has as a standard view a top view, which uh, which is not really the way I would normally expect it. Usually you see uh, a, a backward, a, a back projections essentially kind of from the back. Now, in theory, you should be able to change that. However, um, I'm not quite sure why, but in Nuendo, um, that interface is not really working correctly. Uh, and uh, not quite sure why that is uh, or how that can be fixed, uh, but the interface actually has a number of glitches. So if I want, if I change the back perspective, it doesn't really do anything. Uh, also, if I want to click on certain uh, interface buttons, uh, usually the um, the interface button is not where the pointer is. So so the inter the, 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 there are a couple of, of of issues with the interface. So I hope they they can they can sort it out in the in the not too distant future because otherwise this is actually quite quite nice. You can you can choose to either look at it from a Q perspective or a fierce perspective um, depending on your preference. But once again, always from the from the top view, at least at least in my particular setting. Uh, now, the second part that you need is the um, companion application, which is on a uh, phone. And uh, I'm using the um, 
space controller application on my iPhone. So I opened it up. Now, as soon as I opened it up, uh, it's going to try to connect. And one of the things that I actually found to be really, really nice, it's connecting immediately through Bluetooth. So in my particular case, that was actually a very straightforward thing. Uh, it, it just connected. I, I didn't really have to do anything. If Bluetooth is not working for you, you can also connect it through Wi-Fi. But, but for me, Bluetooth is actually working fine. Now, the way this works is that uh, you have essentially a big button here. Um, and that big button uh, essentially activates the, the tracking. So as soon as I click on that button, I, I can move that, uh, that uh, three-dimensional, I can move that, that sound source in three-dimensional space with the, with the movement of my, of my phone here. I might want to set the front correctly. So, so if you, there's, a, there's a button essentially here that allows me to set the, the sweet spot, so to speak. So I'm, I'm going to click on that set front and then essentially it, it does that correctly. So I'm moving left and right, it, uh, it essentially moves. I should probably show it like that, moves left and right. So um, so let's let's have a brief listen on how that sounds. Now, we, when I'm doing that, please be aware that uh, I have two, two tracking systems going on here simultaneously. The first one is my head tracking. Um, so, you, so you will hear exactly what I'm hearing in my headphones. So if I'm moving left and right, you will also hear that as, as sort of a panning. And simultaneously, I'm also using the panning device with the space controller. And uh, so, so that essentially you're aware that if I'm if I'm taking the space controller and I'm moving my head in in the same way I'm moving the space controller, obviously you're not going to hear anything. So just be aware that, <laughs> that essentially kind of the, the audio that you are going to hear in the video is exactly the audio that I'm going to hear in my in my headphones. So let me uh, let me just go back and let me reset the head tracker to make sure that everything is is uh, essentially positioned correctly and let's uh let's go to and let's maybe solo that uh, bus track sorry uh solo that here and uh let's play well, currently it's in front of me right so so if i'm now moving the and i can i can decide to move that now if i'm falling if i'm now falling with my head obviously I can hear that the sound is coming from there. And that works actually quite well. So I can have multiple uh, space controllers active at the same time. So let me let me just uh, maybe kind of use the synth here. Once again, kind of let's change that to this, the, uh, the space controller. Um, now, um, if, I'm, if I'm essentially opening up two uh, instances of the space controller, what uh, technically happens is that the, the uh, application is going to control both simultaneously. Um, but I can actually change that. And the way to change that is to uh, assign different channels to these individual plugins. So for example, I can say that the, this plugin should uh, communicate on channel number two. And uh, essentially, if I'm now pressing the, uh, the, the, um, the application in channel number one, I, I'm only getting the, the first one and I can actually select on my, on my phone channel number two. And uh, as, as soon as I do that, I'm getting the, the second one. And uh, that works actually reasonably. This, that works actually reasonably well. Now, uh, unfortunately, it only allows four channels. So what you need to do is, when you have more than four instances of that plugin, or if you want to use more than four channels, what you would have to do is you would have to switch certain instances off so that they don't receive that particular signal. One of the thing, one of the things that I would uh, hope that they will implement is that that you have more channels available to you. So that you that you essentially can uh, work with multiple instances simultaneously, and not, not only four, but it, it works actually reasonably well. So, what what are my thoughts about this plugin? Well, um, first of all, uh, let me say that I do believe that this is a really interesting approach. Um, you know, I, I've never seen 
anything uh, that that works so well the connection the bluetooth connection at least on my system worked without much problems and um, and it was immediately recognizable and the the fact that you use your phone as a pointing device uh, to point where the sound actually should come from is actually a really really nice uh, interface touch and uh, and allows you to really position sounds accurately and nicely um, having said that I do believe that the plugin at the moment doesn't seem to be completely ready I had a lot of I encountered a lot of interface bugs uh, it's also slightly uh, unfortunate that you can't uh, position the sound the distance of the sound now obviously you can make up for that by changing the gain but the actual controller application that you have on, a, on your phone while it does have a very big button where you could technically you know uh, conceivably um, also also use it to input two parameters like for example the distance parameter um, it doesn't really take advantage of that so you can't really set the distance only all, all you're really setting is the direction from which the sound comes from and everything else you need to set in the plugin and uh and so i do believe that while this is an interesting one i think it's not ready yet or at least in my opinion not completely ready yet and uh it, this particularly because it is a quite expensive plugin now i said i already said in one of the previous videos that ambisonics plugins tend to come only in two different types of versions uh those that are completely free and those that are way too expensive and unfortunately this one seems to fall into the latter category uh it's actually quite a bit of money for what you're getting uh i think i think it goes for 400 bucks currently it's slightly more, less expensive but still and uh and that is quite a bit to ask for a plugin of this type um my feeling is that it probably is but worth half the, that amount but you know kind of if you if it's something that uh, that kind of fits your workflow and you're working with audio uh, immersive audio on a professional environment it might not make that much of a difference so what i would recommend is download the trial version play around with it and if you think it's worth the money then uh, by all means go for it because i do believe that this is a really interesting approach on panning and i'm really looking forward to what they're going to do in the future with it now with that being said that's everything i wanted to say uh if you uh have any questions or comments please use the comment section below if you uh, like the video please consider subscribing and press the like button and other than that see you at the next video